Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Robert T. Green, CEO of Pre Post Game, specifically this day and always known as the players who are to educate and empower and protect the athletes and the family's best interests alone. Uh, as I do this in Problem 2 Live, as it tends to happen to me where we are in the sports business today, I'm here to remind you, PSA, FYI, again, and I'm going to go slow and direct to the point. Youth sports trafficking is real and it's also everywhere. Uh, back in 2015 and prior to that is my career as a collegiate at oh, professional athlete winded up. I ended up in um, working in human services with at-risk youth, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, uh, lock and key facilities, had to deal with things such as de-escalation techniques pertaining to men to or TCI, therapeutic crisis intervention, as well as many other areas of de-escalating and understanding the people that we serve uh, in the mental health fields, talking about meeting them where they are. Normally, you guys hear me speak with a lot of passion because that's the type of guy I am, especially when it comes to helping people. Uh, again, as a former collegiate, high school, and professional athlete, I'm well aware of how these things go in the sense of that the athlete, what people mostly don't know and understand, is that we are from completely different worlds. Um, that is not by accident. I actually wrote an actual, whatever you want to call it, a manifesto of what sports trafficking is. And I have enough time um, when this video is over, I may read it to you guys. I wrote it. And I'm the only one that's wrote it and willing to speak out about it publicly uh, because at the end of the day, I know my value to those that I serve and those that I serve the value to me and I appreciate them. Um, and again, that's the difference. Uh, and particularly, we talk about name, image, and likeness, NIL. That was given to them by their parents. Um, and so at the end of the day, whether it's the NCAA or Congress, what they were doing recently pertaining to their actual meeting regarding this actual NIL, means absolutely nothing because those players and their best interest was not being represented in their room. Trust the facts, not the process. And so once again, just to keep you guys informed and abreast of what's going on, name, image, and likeness in a lot of states are supposed to take place in July 1, as if you will. NCAA has done nothing in regarding the NIL because essentially the NCAA does not want your student athlete, the ones that are generating trillions, to be successful for anything that's based on their own best well wishes. Trust the facts, not the process. However, you don't need to worry about that because pre-post games are working hard and diligent and providing the exact service that's needed, whether you're getting compensated or not getting compensated. What you have to understand about name, image, and likeness is about name who you are, the person, image, where you're at, and most, most importantly, likeness, where you want to be, how you see yourself, your dreams and aspirations, your thoughts, your prayers. Again, at the end of the day, are you going to the right place under the right person to help steer you in the right way? And as we know about the NCAA and these college coaches, which I'll get to in a second, we know that's not the case. We know that they're looked at as an actual number, as an actual asset to be used. And I shouldn't say asset. So that's something to actually be thrown away, the equity of it all. So at the end of the day, no different than the draft process. It's the same thing in the recruiting process. If they really cared about you individually, they wouldn't be seeking to replace you the following year with the same methods that they got you in the first place. Trust the facts, not the process. So with that being said, again, I was going to go ahead and just pull this other slide up real quick so you guys can be aware of what's actually going on. Uh, and again, for those who guys that haven't followed us, when you get a chance, if you are on Twitter, we tend to put out information. Please go check us out at the pre-post game on Twitter. So as of... Um, you know, today there was a meeting about uh, NIL and Mark Emery, who was the president of the actual NCAA, uh, was grilled by lawmakers as well as people that, quote unquote, were there to represent the players' best interests or the players' um, plight. Um, if I'm not there, point blank period in the story, their representation, their best wishes was not represented. This is something that I've been doing, my company has been doing, will continue to do based on the things that we know and understand. When you talk about making decisions about other people um, and their best interests without having them there, it goes back to history when slaves were freed. So once again, now you're talking about people who are older, who works in the system, gets paid for the system. Now sitting in a room talking about with those that without them, they wouldn't make any money through the system, how that should best benefit them. That is completely oblivious of what capitalism in the United States of America is. Trust the facts, not the process. So we're not here for that. And as I said in my, in my quote, sports trafficking is real. Now, NIL was given to them by their parents, not Congress or the NCAA. The narrative you're writing won't work because the players aren't represented in their room. 
they'll have the final say. Trust the facts, not the process. What I know and understand about this business, for those who don't know why you see these things changing, NIL, as I said before, name, image, and likeness is pre, post, game. Regarding giving athletes in a situation and their parents empowerment, protection, and basically educate them on their rights pertaining to on the field and off the field, as far as representation and consulting about what's in their best interest going forward, understanding where they want to be, the ins and outs of it, not because what they thought, told what they wanted to hear, but not what they need to know. And so with that being said, it's the same as I think. You can make all the rules you want, NCAA and Congress. These are human beings first and foremost. You're treating them, you're treating the NIL as another case of saying that student athlete, now you're calling it NIL. Call it what it is, their name, who they are, what they represent, and their name on their back as their families. So at the end of the day, whether they get money now, the NIL is not about college. It's not about getting paid in college for those who don't know and understand. The NIL is much bigger than that. It's about who you are as a human being who happens to specialize in being an athlete that can generate revenue for other people. And how is that sport actually going to transition you to the next space where you want to be? Athletically, educationally, professionally, socially, and mentally. And what's the best decision you need to make to secure or surround yourself with the people that actually can help benefit you in that plight? So trust the process is completely obsolete and dangerous to the actual athlete and the family's best interest. Always has been, always will be. You can't trust the process that's built off of you to benefit someone else. And please, for those out there that's talking about this free education, once again, you've never been in a classroom with an athlete. You never took a college education. You never understood the classes you were getting. So your, your thought process or your comments on that is not warranted in this conversation. This is between those who can and those that have. Simple as that. It's simple as that. No one else. I'll say that again. This conversation of NIL between those that have and those that can and at the end of the day, you got to know your worth because knowledge is power. And if you don't have knowledge, then you're not going to understand your worth. And then you have a bunch of people in a room talking about NIL, again, dehumanizing you once again. Next man up, they basically go about their business and figure out a way, well, you know what? We don't really care about paying you, but how can we not get sued? This industry is worth trillions. And again, I'm not going to talk about it today, but it's a, 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 a unique a specific way we go about representing our players here at pre-post game and elevating and developing them. And it's through the art of pie. And we're not talking about the pie of you being at the at, in, in high school or youth and you cutting the pie up the slice. We're talking about pie. Performance, image, and exposure. Again, if you want to have your name, image, and likeness built properly in the sense that you help you elevate to where you want to be, contact us at prepostgame.com. So that's the first piece regarding that. Secondarily, Former player, Giovanni Johnson, recalls how coaches at Michigan used to threaten Dr. Anderson physical if they didn't work hard enough. These failures to protect student athletes are beyond deplorable. Schembeckler's statue and name should be removed immediately. That was written by a young woman about what's going on. And for those who didn't know the case, Schembeckler, Bo Schembeckler was a former coach at University of Michigan. And his son, and again, trust the facts, not the process, the son of the former Michigan football coach, Bo Shepard, like I said, he told his father that former team doctor, Robert Anderson, molested him during a physical exam in the 1960s, and that the revered coach ignored the complaint and went on his way to make sure Anderson kept his role with the team. Just facts, not the process. But the facts between all of these things, then the question was, what is so disturbing about that is that Shem Beckler and his Michigan staff was instrumentalizing sexual violence in order to compel players to endure physical harm to benefit the team. Bo Shem Beckler's son asked for his understanding of why Bo protected Anderson. He said he was essentially that Bo could control Anderson and exert pressure on doctors to treat players as he saw fit. Simply meaning, misdiagnose your injury. Simply meaning, help you not end up going to the pro game, simply meaning not help you understand what's really going on with you, what's wrong with you when you leave that school with that injury, that the NCAA nor the school that you put your body on the line for was actually there to make sure you had the quality of life that you sought out once you got there. This guys, you should know. Because I've been doing this for so long, 
and pretty much the simply the only one that brought this to attention. What we have here is essentially, and you're watching this video right now, you're okay with children being trafficked physically, mentally, sexually, emotionally harmed in any way. We got problems. I, I have no problem telling you that. If I see it, I'm going to point it out. I'm going to address it. I'm going to do something about it. The sad part about it is, up the decade after decade after decade, without sports trafficking, we would not have a Jerry Zandusky. We not, would not have a Robert Anderson. We would not have a Joe Pop, a Bo Schembechler. We would not have a Dr. Larry Nasser for 20 years of the Olympic Committee where females are being molested sexually and emotionally. We would not have a Chris Doyle, a Brian Ferentz, a Kirk Ferentz, 22 years of racism and bullying. And now having a law firm saying, oh, yeah, we recognize it, but we feel like he's the best person to go about making the change. Says who? Athletes. You have to understand. You matter. Your lives matter. And at the end of the day, I want all to hear the sound of my voice to understand we have no problem here at pre post scheme of putting you out this business for good. Essentially, that's what we're here to do. We're here to educate and empower and protect the athlete's best interests alone. And if you're not there in the best interest of the athlete, because that athlete is the reason why you have a career, because without them, there is no you, what would you be doing? Then at the end of the day, we strongly advise you to understand, first and foremost, these people are human beings. They have a family. Their wants and well wishes matter. The thought, the, 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 the progress, I mean, the process of lying to players, to their ears, to their teeth, to your teeth, and then turning around and taking jobs elsewhere, as you see now, the NCAA has the one-time transfer rule. Is that because coaches are liars? That's why that rule was passed. And again, who pushed the initiative? You're talking, you're looking at them right now. I'm at the spot, point in my life, and I tell people this all the time. It's like, you were born broke, you're going to die broke. Meaning you can't take your Instagram followers, your Twitter followers, your Facebook followers with you. You know they're going to pay your family's bills. So everything between that time when you're born and you're gone, you need to own it. And I own the fact that when it comes to children, specifically athletes, that knowing what we go through, what we went through, and how at the end of the day leaves us broken physically, mentally, emotionally, and like I said, in this case, with Michigan or, or, or um, Michigan State, Ohio State, broken sexually. And the sad part about it is we're going to sit back and why do I do these videos and speak out? Because again, the powers that be, the ones, you know, the ones that they call the worldwide leader that without the actual athletes, there would be no them as well. Let's see how much they cover this story. Or a few people, as I see right now, this, this person put this thing out about, and from the man's son, the man's son said, Daddy, the doctor did this to me. And he left them in that environment. He left other people's children in that environment. And you want us to respect your legacy and your coaches and your actual, what you call tradition, that without, in this case, many, many African-American athletes, there would be no legacy. Wins and losses, financial, tradition, it will be absolutely nothing. So understand how these things have been built. Understand how these things have been built. Understand how you as a parent Talking about God's plan. This is corporate America. When I teach athletes and families, you are a pro athlete. The moments I'm willing to pay to watch you play. Because every conversation after that is going to tell you what you want to hear, but not what you need to know. Because of these people really don't have no skill set whatsoever outside of manipulating children into doing things against their own best interest because they do not know. Focus on their social and economic standing, where they come from, their beliefs of not being able to make it to succeed, so they turn to athletics and entertainment without understanding the line that they're signing, not understanding what they're giving away physically and mentally, financially, that in 2021, that this is what we have. And then the president of the NCAA, Mark Emmert, once again, it's not qualified to do anything pertaining to student athletes. 
We've seen this over and over and over again. But once again, what's going to have to happen and what is going to happen? And for those of you guys who don't know, a little backdrop in 2016. There was some racism going on in Missouri. Where it wasn't a student athlete, but it was a student who happened to be African American. Who was being bullied through racism and all types of things that were going on with feces put on the wall and he was bullied and picked on. He was really, really sick to his stomach. The young man did not receive any help from anyone on that campus until the football team became aware of it. You know, the football team where it's about 4% of African Americans on the campus to go to school, but about 70% of the African Americans that play on the football team to generate the revenue so the teachers and the, and the coaches can get paid and the students' tuition can be lower, you know, those guys. So they basically intervened on the young man's behalf. And it got to the point where the young man wasn't eating, to the point where he was getting so sick that it, it could have been a life and death situation. Well, the football team made a statement. You know, the ones that you really don't hear about to this day. You know, you see a lot of these 30 for 30s pop up in all these different shows. And you'll hear people talk about three hours about who was not great at what and who was a bust versus not. But you'll hear the fact that these young student athletes at Missouri, Missouri, who made the statement that the president of that university was there for 30 years. If he did not remove himself, they would not be playing on Saturday. Took it for a joke, it did. That was unfortunate. As we got closer to Saturday, the, the pressure became even further regarding what the players said they was not going to do. Simply because if those players, majority African-American athletes, did not leave, then they would not play the game on Saturday. I repeat, they would not play the game on Saturday. So since... This is Thursday. This is our TBT. University of Missouri President Chancellor resigns over handling of racial incidents. But what it should say is because the football team, who generates millions in revenue per week to help pay his salary, and because that one African American did not get justice, the football team got justice for him. And so after 30 years, he resigned. Not because he wanted to, it's because what the football players, the majority of African American athletes, what they mean not only to that school, but to that state, to that economy, to that revenue stream. So we have gotten to the point where it has become sport to basically go against our best wishes as a culture, as a society, Throw a helmet sticker on our head, like when we was in second grade, when a teacher would give you an apple on your grade that say you did good, when you don't know if you passed or not. But that was the only validation you would get for your efforts. It wasn't saying you was a good person. It was saying that what you did was approved of or validated by the person you saw or thought was the authority. Trust the facts, not the process. Them days... Or over. Over. When he left, he tried to say it was about love. And again, how people want to narrate these situations. But the reality was, the NCAA knew then. Once that team decided not to play, the NCAA that we currently know it as, and their business model, is over. NCAA, as we know today as a business model, is still over. Just the facts, not the process. Because what's going to happen is when everybody meeting, trust and believe and understand, I don't go by the player's rep name because it sounds catchy. I go by that name because at the end of the day, I'm well aware of what the players are thinking, what they're doing. My company is well aware and part of how this change is being made. Anyone that got the time to go back and just do your due diligence, cross your T's, dot your I's, 
you see all these changes going on, name, image, and likeness, players basically in the transfer portal, players not to sit out, players skipping the bowl game. No apologies. Pay the players. Okay? No play. It's not by accident that all these coaches that once were national champions are now still hanging on coaching at schools at FIU, FAU, and this and that, and this and that. In 2021, it's really clear and easy to see. The two biggest groups out there, when we're talking about the term Black Lives Matter, and in particular when it comes to sports, and African-American athletes, the two biggest revenue generators off the backs of the athletes are absolutely silent regarding this issue. And those people are your coaches from your high school and your college and your sports agencies as your pros. So when I say sports trafficking is real, understand who the traffickers are. Understand when something hits the media that you didn't know and all of a sudden it makes you decide to come back to school. Understand who those sources are. They're standing right next to you. They're right around you. They're smiling in your face. And then when they say you're not going to sign with them, they're tweeting and posting and leaking things to the media right behind your back. You as the athlete in 2021 need to be your source. You need to be able to be professionally developed, be able to use your voice for good, be able to express yourself, put yourself in a situation where at the end of the day, when you say things, you are confident in understanding where it's going to lead you, not this trust the process BS. No one in this country that goes to work every day, puts 40 hours a week in, and then when you talk about getting paid, they say, as they employ it to them, trust the process you may get something out of it. Or, matter of fact, you put the 40 to 60 dollars we can then pat you in the back at a boy, at a girl. The one thing that as, as athletes that we've always been guilty of and that doesn't change is our competitive nature. And that's a part of manipulation. So those that, again, they get hired and paid the most money are rewarded for their ability to manipulate children. Traffic. If you were so great and so confident in your coaching, you wouldn't be concerned about transfer portals. If you were telling the truth, you wouldn't worry about what kid or what other coach says what and why. It shouldn't be a dead period to keep you from saying something. Because the industry is saying that we know you're liars, so we want to maintain and keep the lies to a minimum at a certain time so we can control it. Trust the facts, not the process or the NCAA. I'm calm and cool collected because I'm extremely frustrated and I'm so sorry for this young man in Michigan. I'm so sorry for the young men and women at Michigan State and Iowa and Penn State. And the list goes on and on and on. And Baylor and Michigan. The list just goes on forever. I'm sorry for that. But what I'm not sorry for is what's going to happen next and what's already started to happen. Athletes becoming empowered. Athletes becoming educated. Athletes becoming protected based on what they know and understand the right thing to do. So if you're watching this video, your parent watching this video, or athlete watching this video, and something like that has happened to you, I encourage you to speak out. Let your voice be heard. At the end of the day, there are people here that care about you and understand what you went through. You're not alone. Not alone at all. They can't hurt you anymore. And again, regarding that fan base, they're, they're not fans of you. They're fans of that uniform to make them feel like something that they're really not. Simple as that. So don't worry about bringing you, speaking your truth and bringing it to power because it's going to disappoint somebody else who never cared about you in the first place. My name is Robert T. Green, the CEO of Pre Post Game, also known as a player's rep at Educate and Empower. Protect the athletes and their families' best interests alone. Sports trafficking is real. I'm going to be releasing some things now along with our HQ package, our NIL Academy. 
as well as our next phases of how we're going to basically address these things going forward in society about getting athletes and their families and whatever time it may be, you know, with this term in, in law called statute of limitations. These things, again, tend to run out. But regarding the realistic situation of these schools not addressing these people and addressing these situations seriously, there's ways to go about doing that. And we're going to talk more about it a little bit later. So at the end of the day, you guys keep fighting a good fight. We'll be talking soon. God bless. Have a great weekend.